I would like to welcome um, our presenters for this session, Ella Schreifer, Farah Bazi, Nelson Schumacher, and Dave Dillon. Why don't you guys take it away? Hi, everybody. My name is Farah Bazi, and I'm a PhD student in history at Stanford University. Here we go. Here I'm in. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Ella Schreifer, and I'm an Iberian and Latin American PhD student at Stanford. Hi, my name is Dave Dillon. I am counseling faculty and a professor at Grossmont College in San Diego. I'm also a California Community College statewide academic senate regional lead for the OER initiative. And hi, my name is Nelson Schumacher, and I'm a comparative literature PhD student at Stanford. We acknowledge that the Stanford campus is located within the Muwekma Ohlone territory and Grossmont College resides on Kumeyaay land. These land acknowledgements serve to honor and respect indigenous people and their connections to the land. We are delighted to be here with you all today and we wanted to extend a big, big thanks to Lena and Alan for facilitating this presentation. So before we get started, I'd like to point out that throughout our presentation, we will be making frequent references to various resources pertaining to our website, liqproject.org. So to follow up on these, please see the shared Google Drive document in the chat box with all the pertinent links. So our plan for today is twofold. First, we'll outline the Stanford Life in Quarantine project and then discuss how the collaboration between this project and Professor Dave Dillon is taking shape in its early stages. And second, we'll ask for your feedback as to how we can most effectively design our teaching quarantine page and generate engagement from the OE community. So back in March, as numbers in Northern California were rising and the shelter-in-place order came in, Nelson, Ellis, and I were forced to acknowledge, along with all of you, the drastic ramifications of the pandemic and how our lives were forced to change. In fact, I ended up deciding to return to the Netherlands to be closer to my family, and that's where I am today. In these turbulent times, we thought that documenting personal accounts of the pandemic would not only help us to better understand what we're all going through, but would also demonstrate to others the sheer global reach of this pandemic. And this is how our project, Life in Quarantine, Witnessing Global Pandemic, started. Ellis, I think you're muted. Well, we expected this to happen, right? Someone had to do it. Um, at the core of the project, we have an open online historical archive that houses personal accounts in a wide range of languages from various countries. So how do we collect these stories? Well, on our website, liqproject.org, you can find our submission form, which is currently available in 15 languages. On the form, we ask respondents basic demographic questions, all of which are optional. At this time, LIQ is really focused on just collecting and growing the historical archive and isn't so much as focused on analyzing this data. And in order to protect the privacy of our respondents and to guarantee freedom of expression, all information provided is kept private, except for the respondent's written account, initials, age, occupation, and provided city. These stories document how the COVID-19 pandemic is changing the lives of people from various backgrounds across the globe. And as you can see, our archive features hundreds of stories from over 30 countries and 10 languages. And through these diverse accounts, we can see that while this pandemic has transcended international borders, creating a common global experience, people's different national, regional, class, gender, and racial backgrounds produce widely varied experiences. So we're looking forward to including many more pins on the map, and we would encourage all of you to contribute your story and spread the word, especially those of you in areas currently not represented on the map. So since March, LIQ has gone from being a virtual archive to now serving global communities as an online multifaceted platform that addresses the transformation we're experiencing in the age of COVID-19. In addition to our archive of personal stories, our site offers a space where individuals can share different types of creative expression, like creative writing, blogs, music, and visual art. 
In other words, our website has become a hub for global community involvement. Furthermore, we also feature other initiatives that are doing similar work. One of the collaborations that we're especially excited about as educators ourselves is with Professor Dave Dillon, with whom we're turning our archive into a pedagogical tool for the classroom. In line with OER practices, we have created a page on our site called Teaching Quarantine, where teachers can share, exchange, and edit or adapt syllabi, assignments, activities, methodologies, lesson plans, and ideas about how they are responsibly addressing the pandemic in their disciplines and classrooms. We wanna showcase the diversity of approaches to pandemic pedagogy and make them available to other teachers. This will allow teachers in many fields to engage in a broader conversation about how to integrate this new normal into the classroom. We'll now pass it over to Dave Dillon, who will talk a bit about how he's incorporating our LIQ Life in Quarantine archive in his teaching. Then we'll briefly show you around the Teaching Quarantine page and conclude with the discussion of the project's broader potential for education during the pandemic. Essentially, we, we're eager to hear your feedback and suggestions, as it is our hope that our site can serve as an OE resource for instructors and professors like you. Thank you, Nelson. In 2017, I began on working, um, I began working on curating, co-authoring, and editing a college success OER textbook called Blueprint for Success in College and Career. The Blueprint text is a remix including Creative Commons by Attribution Works from Open Oregon, Lumen Learning, and the State University of New York. With intentional design of reading more like a conversation rather than a textbook talking at students, it includes TED Talks, personal essays, and culturally relevant examples that resonate with students and faculty. The blueprint text was published in 2018 by the Rebus community. I humbly share that the Blueprint OER text won a Textbook Excellence Award from the Textbook and Academic Author Association in the United States and an Open Textbook Award from OE Global in 2019. If you may be interested in learning more about the community that contributed to Blueprint, please join me for the Blueprint community presentation beginning in an hour after this session. One of the most valuable and gratifying results of using the Blueprint OER text is seeing significant increases in student success and retention data. The blueprint text has experienced unexpected popularity and has been adopted in over 30 colleges and universities and now reaches over 10,000 students each semester. With greater influence, there is greater responsibility. I have a responsibility to include and amplify voices of more female authors, more authors of color, more LGTBQ authors, and more authors of differing abilities. I am pleased to have had the opportunity to learn about the Life in Quarantine project, collaborate with Ellis, Ferra, and Nelson, and want to take a moment to recognize that these three are students. What these three are doing inspires me. I am reminded of the open pedagogy approaches OER edited by Alexis Clifton and Kimberly Davis, Davies Hoffman. If you would like to catch their presentation, it is in room C just after this session. From their work, ideas expressed in Robin DeRose's foreword and in unit three titled Open Pedagogy as Open Student Projects share common themes with the Life in Quarantine project. Ellis, Vera, and Nelson, however, instead of being students in a class where an instructor facilitated open collaboration, took initiative to create an open resource on their own. And now that work is being shared with instructors to implement in their courses. I'm fortunate to be an early adopter of that implementation and thought that integrating it into the blueprint text would enhance global awareness of students. At a time when my country is fighting to retain democracy, I am teaching about the value of cultural competency and global citizenship. I also teach about the negative consequences of being ethnocentric. The Life in Quarantine essays have been integrated in the blueprint text with a link in the chapter on cultural competency. This presents an opportunity for students to read and learn about people in different places, 
from different cultures with different circumstances, yet all with the pandemic in common. Students reading these essays have been able to see the world from a broader perspective and appreciate the value in cultural competency and global citizenship. With submissions from six continents represented, and if you guessed that Antarctica is the continent, we're still hoping to get submissions from. And if you know anyone <laughs> who, who may be in Antarctica that would be willing to submit, uh, we, we would like to connect with you. Uh, worldwide representation is evident. As I strive to also teach principles of anti-racism, life and quarantine essays provide a foundation to do so. Students are learning about diversity, demonstrating empathy, and are showing an increase in participation of discussions involving these essays. As the pandemic continues to affect every single person worldwide, the life and quarantine essays offer a relevant teaching resource for students to learn more about the world and deepens our understanding of global issues and of each other. As more faculty use life in quarantine as a resource, it will be valuable for instructors to share their ideas and lesson plans in an open exchange of ideas in line with open pedagogy and communities of practice. We are excited about these opportunities. Nelson will now show a tour of the teaching quarantine page. Thank you, Dave. Um, so, in order to avoid some technical surprises, uh, I'll be showing some screenshots of the site instead of doing a live demonstration with the screen share, if that's okay. Um, the link to the page is on the Google Doc that Alice uh, shared above in the chat, and I definitely encourage you to check it out after the presentation. Um, so, this is very much a work in progress, and we're eager to hear your thoughts about what we have so far and how we can improve the page layout and interface as we move forward. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, so on the main page of Teaching Quarantine, we spotlight some of the, of the educators who are using the archive to create classroom activities. So for instance, uh, here you see Shorlan Vasquez, who teaches sociology at Santa Rosa Junior College, and her testimonial about the initiative. And on the left-hand side, you can find different assignment ideas that she created for her students, which are viewable directly on the site. And here is an example of history assignments created by our very own Farah Bazi. Her activities explore methodological questions and can be adapted to reflect various archives dealing with the topic of the pandemic or crisis. All this pedagogical content is under Creative Commons license. And on the upper corner, you can download the document and edit it on any word processor. And here's a third example. Uh, our very own Alice Schriefer uh, here offers a number of ideas of how to use the archive creatively to teach foreign languages. In her case, she teaches Spanish, but she designed his activities in such a way that any language instructor can translate, adapt, and develop them. And here, again, I'd like to emphasize the multilingual character of the Life in Quarantine archive. And as you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you'll find more information on all of our collaborators. Uh, if you click on a portrait picture, it'll lead you to an individual profile where you can interact directly with the collaborator through comment boxes that look just like this one at the bottom of the page. Um, so our goal is to engage more educators and serve a broader student audience. We invite you to join us. If you'd like to work with us, please fill out the short form, which is also on the Teaching Quarantine page. In the Q&A, we'd love to hear suggestions as to how we can improve our interface and how we can increase the engagement with the teaching community. We envision our project to be useful in all types of classrooms, community colleges, universities like Stanford, and even high schools and grade schools. As the examples from Professor Dillon and Professor Vasquez show, teaching quarantine can serve or be useful for a myriad of disciplines. For example, as a teacher of history, there are infinite ways in which I could effectively employ this project in my own classroom. For example, the archive stories provide an excellent starting point for discussions on primary sources and archiving. And by looking at these stories, students can gain an awareness about the many challenges historians face in narrating the past and making sense of the present. Furthermore, it enables students to comprehend how archiving is not a neutral act. It depends on active choices that come with 
about opportunities and limitations. Currently, we're in discussions with other educators in and out of Stanford who have, created, who have creatively incorporated pandemic-related themes in their classrooms, and they'll be sharing materials with us shortly to keep the ball rolling. We're confident that with your feedback and engagement with our international community of educators, the site will develop rapidly. So to wrap up, we see our collaboration with Professor Dillon as a starting point for something so much bigger as we're facing a future in which we'll likely encounter greater challenges and disruptions to our sense of normalcy. The way that we address the pandemic in the classroom could serve as a model for how to creatively deal with rapidly changing circumstances on a local and global level. As education is undergoing transformations, it's more important than ever to be collaboratively addressing issues of accessibility, equality, and diversity and the OE community really offers one of the best approaches to this changing landscape. Ultimately, we are showcasing diverse community created resources and providing a platform for educators to share and discuss pedagogical approaches that we hope will in turn engage their students and push them to develop their own voices and agency so as to better make sense of and participate in this current moment. Thank you so much for listening. We really look forward to your questions, comments, and suggestions, and we hope that you'll join us in this effort. And should you be interested in receiving occasional updates about the Teaching Quarantine page, be sure to add your name and email to our Google Doc so we can keep you in the loop. Thank you so much. And just remember, Dave's session is coming up soon, so be sure to, to hear more about Blueprint then. Wonderful. Thank you so much, all four of you. That was just that was just an excellent presentation and um, and you inspired a lot of people in the chat. So over to you to um, to take any questions. Yeah, if anyone has any questions, feel free to either write them in the chat um, or, you know, or, or speak up. We'd love we'd love to hear from you. And could definitely use, you know, suggestions as to how uh, we can make this site more effective. Did you get anything that really surprised you, like unexpected or that stand out as remarkable? Mm -hmm. um, in, in terms of, of the, the stories? Yeah. Um, I think the one that we were definitely not expecting came from actually an inmate in Washington State. Um, and I still don't know how he found out of, about the project, but we got a story from him and it's a very moving story, you know, about basically how uh, he's basically in prison and uh, some of the guards were refusing to wear masks. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, the whole story is about basically um, there's a, some sort of rebellion uh, in the prison uh, during Ramadan. I think there was some controversy about Ramadan and uh, uh, so yeah, that, that's kind of the background context. And, you know, meanwhile, he, he's receiving all the news about the pandemic and the guards are like refusing to wear masks. Um, so we were definitely not expecting um, that that one. That one is, we, I can probably think of some other ones um, and now that um, that one definitely stood out. Yeah, we also got one from um, the Netherlands and that was actually a story written from the perspective from of the dog of someone. And he sort of um, narrated how um, the dog is experiencing quarantine and written in the I form, which was very amusing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Lori Beth, um, we would we would really love if you you know if you um, uh, fill out the maybe fill out the form um, on the teaching quarantine page. Or get in touch with us. Uh, we would definitely love to continue this conversation uh, with you. Alan, I want to say your clock is really helpful. So thank you. I'm, I'm <laughs> feeling um, relieved that we are not going over <laughs> over the allotted time. Uh, thanks to my co-presenters, um, I, I really like the way that uh, that it um, that it worked out, 
And, um, and thanks to all the folks in the audience for joining us. We really appreciate um, your taking the time. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and Dave has been so patient with us as you know, we've been taking classes and, and writing papers and he has been just unbelievably busy. Yeah. So he has carved out so much time for us and has uh, been so patient with the process. Well, thank you all so much for sharing this work and, um, and for joining us at OE Global. Everyone really appreciates it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lena, and thank you, everyone. Maybe it's time.